There is an ancient Greek myth that tells the story of Jason and the Argonauts and their quest for the Golden Fleece. As part of this quest, Jason knows that he will need to sail his team across the stretch of sea where the sirens sing their tempting songs. The sirens were well known for singing beautiful music that would hypnotize those who heard it. Sailors would hear the sirens and be so compelled by their songs that they would steer their ships toward the music and inevitably crash on the rocky coast where the sirens were singing. Jason obviously wanted to avoid this fate, and so he hired Orpheus to join his expedition. Orpheus was not a powerful soldier or an expert navigator. No, he was a renowned musician. When the sirens began to sing, Orpheus' job was to play louder and more beautiful music than that of the sirens, and thereby prevent Jason or anyone else on the crew from directing their ship toward the rocky cliffs. In other words, Orpheus was simply tasked with singing a better song. You see, sometimes in life, we don't need to confront the monsters directly. Sometimes we just need to sing a better song, or to put it slightly differently, sometimes we just need to tell a better story. That was certainly the case for Martin Luther. You knew a Martin Luther was story was coming on Reformation Sunday. In his early days as an Augustinian monk, Luther was convinced that his sin would bring God's wrath and destruction upon him. And so he worked very hard to try and live a disciplined life. He quite literally beat himself up in order to show God how repentant he was. His whole life was dictated by these feelings of fear and shame. And here's the thing about fear and shame. When those emotions are the primary song in our life, it makes everything you do more difficult. We actually see this in the gospel passage I just read for you. Jesus is in a heated discussion with several Jewish authority figures. And as a result, these authority figures are likely feeling a little bit insecure and maybe even a little afraid. They feel threatened by this new rabbi and the things that he's saying. They feel their grip on power being picked away by the words and actions of Jesus. For these Jewish scholars, fear and anxiety were quickly becoming a very predominant part of their story. And so when Jesus says to them, the truth will make you free, they immediately go on the defensive. They say to Jesus, we are children of Abraham. We've never been slaves to anyone. And you see, this is what fear and anxiety can do to us. When those emotions are predominantly a part of our story, we can end up extremely defensive, like the Jewish authorities, and we can also become extremely forgetful. Because the Jewish leaders tell Jesus they've never been slaves to anyone, but what what about the children of Abraham who were forced into exile in Babylon? And, And what about the children of Abraham who were enslaved by the Egyptians for 400 years? And of course, what about the Roman Empire that currently occupied the very city where these Jewish authorities were standing. These Jewish scholars were so afraid of the ways that Jesus was undermining their power that they seemed to have completely forgotten their own story. It's easy to chuckle at the events we find in this gospel passage, but we have to remind ourselves that the stories of Scripture are always written to us and about us. Because just like those Jewish authorities, we too can quickly become so locked up by fear and anxiety that we begin to forget our story. As we hear about the ongoing war in Ukraine, or the escalating conflict in the Holy Land, or about another terrifying event that took place in Lewiston, Maine this past week. As we encounter these types of stories, it's easy to become very afraid. 
And of course, it's not just the big, flashy news stories that can create this fear in us. We also will worry that we're not measuring up at work. Or we'll worry that our friends don't like us. Or we'll worry that our marriage is on the rocks. Or we'll worry about how we're going to pay all these unexpected medical bills. We worry and worry and worry. And all this worry can become like a siren song pulling us in. But as Christians, we've been given a better story. A better story that can give us the confidence to face all these worries head on. Which brings me back to our guy Martin Luther. He was finally able to break out of his spiral of shame and fear and self-loathing by reading the scriptures. He obviously had studied them extensively as a monk, but one day these words jumped off the page to him. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. This is not the result of works, so that no one may boast. Grace, not works. God does not require us to earn God's love. No, 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 it's a gift from God. No more worrying about if we're good enough in God's eyes. We are loved, we are accepted. This is the story that we've been given. This realization compelled Luther to speak up and to demand that the church of his day start telling a better story. For his entire life, Luther had been taught that he needed to work his way up to God, that he needed to be good enough or repentant enough to avoid God's vengeance. But then he learned that there was actually a much better story contained within the scriptures. And this realization freed Luther from his fear. It's exactly like what Jesus said would happen in the gospel passage. If you continue in my word, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. If we continue living the Jesus story, then we won't be locked up by fear. We won't be pulled off course by worry. We'll be able to face the struggles of this life with confidence, because we'll know that our value is found in the freely given love of Jesus, and that nothing can take that away from us. Last night, a group of us gathered here at Bethany for the confirmation evening of honor. At our 10 a.m. service this morning, we will confirm these young people who have completed the confirmation process. But last night we gathered and we heard all sorts of stories together. Each student being confirmed stood up with their family in front of the whole group and their parents or their godparents would share blessings and reflections about their child. And then that young person would respond to all these blessings and stories by publicly saying these words. I am a child of God. I am loved beyond measure. I am gifted, blessed, and called by God. My people and my community need me. My church and my family need me. My friends and the whole of creation need me. I ask the Holy Spirit and the people of Christ to strengthen, pray for, lead, and guide me. That is not a statement of fear or worry. Last night, these young people confidently told the gathered community that they want to keep living the Jesus story. And not only that, but they realize that the world needs people who live the Jesus story. There's so much in our world today that troubles our hearts and can fill us with fear. But that's exactly why we must keep sharing the Jesus story. Think about it. Social media is designed to intentionally feed us stories that make us angry or feel inadequate. And the news media intentionally shares stories that are meant to make us afraid. And over the years, we've listened to all of this noise, and we've grown more and more divided as a result. Just like those Jewish authorities in the gospel, we become defensive. We become anxious. We can't believe that anyone would support that cause or that candidate. And as the fear and the anxiety and the anger well within us, 
we forget our story. The world doesn't need more people arguing in the comment section. The world doesn't need more people so dead set on one way of thinking that they refuse to hear the pain of the people on the other side. The world doesn't need more name calling or violence or hatred. No, the world needs to hear what Martin Luther heard so many years ago. That our worthiness is not based on our ability to prove that we're right. Our worthiness is found in the freely, freely given love of Jesus Christ. And so, as wars rage, and individuals and nations continue to meet violence with more violence, as political rhetoric escalates and tries to divide us further and further, I believe that as Christians, we're called to tell a better story. To receive God's message of grace for us, and then to find our own ways to share and cultivate for the world. Jesus' story of peace, compassion, love, and grace. Amen.